Hello. I'm a completely different person. Can you see I have a different t-shirt on? Not for the fun stuff. The web has evolved a little bit since WordPress uh, was created. Um, especially in recent years, uh, there's this shift from the web being something where you go in and you write some HTML and some CSS and maybe some JavaScript, or you use some sort of server-side rendering engine like WordPress to generate those things. Um, but you generally work on the core files to an environment where a lot of new features have become important, like accessibility and performance and progressive features and build tools and modern CSS and JavaScript and unit testing. And there are all these new things. And this is happening because the web is maturing. So if you think about it, the web as a thing was created in 1993. So it's very, very new. And up until this point, we have basically been trying to figure out what the web is and how the web should work. And now we kind of know. And we realize that the tooling we've used, this having human beings poke at computers to write out all the code, isn't necessarily the most effective way of doing things. So we've started shifting our tool base to more advanced tools that help us do these things. Because a lot of those things that you see on the screen now are hard for people to understand because they're um, ways of making code work better for computers, not for human beings. The problem is WordPress is lagging behind, not out of volition or intent, but simply because WordPress is very much the gateway to web development for a large portion of the web community. The first time people touch web code is through WordPress, usually by writing a post and then being like, I need to make a change here, and then either going into the customizer and changing the CSS or going into the code editor inside WordPress, which you should never do, and then, uh, and then making some crazy change and then taking their site down and then going on the internet and searching for white screen of death and getting 800 million results and then being like, I don't understand, can I delete the thing? But the, the, the core, the, the, the success of WordPress was that the code shipped in WordPress is actually understandable. If you're not a web developer, but you have an, a, some, some sort of idea of how code works, you can go into the theme that's on your site and actually understand what's going on. Uh, all the PHP functions that are used in WordPress are wrapped inside semantic functions that actually say what they do. Get the post. Get the permalink. This is what makes WordPress so popular and what makes it the gateway to web development. But it also is what has held WordPress back because when people learn to build WordPress themes by looking at WordPress themes, they don't learn anything about modern build processes or modern technologies. They learn how WordPress themes have been built since day one. That's not great because WordPress powers 31.9% of the web, as some other guy mentioned 10 minutes ago. Um, and if we don't stay current, we hold the web back. Now, this is you know, where I could go and say, all of you go out and learn all these advanced technologies. I make courses, you buy my courses, <laughs> you can learn this stuff, thank you very much. But I'm not gonna do that, because that would be stupid. Um, the question that was facing me last year was, how do we move WordPress and through it the web forward? How do we use WordPress as an engine of change on the web so we improve the overall code on the web? Because if we can improve the code of WordPress, if we can improve every single WordPress theme and every single plugin and ship it, then 31% of the web just automatically gets better. And the graphs will actually show it. Um, there are graphs that show how when WordPress shipped responsive images, all of a sudden the overall image size on the web was dramatically reduced to the point where uh, people at Google were like, do you know what happened at this date? And I'm like, yeah, WordPress shipped responsive images by default. It's crazy that you can see it in a graph. But that's actually something WordPress did, and that means that we can do that. So there's this idea of a vision path. If there's a place people want to go, and enough people just go there, you end up making a road that goes there. And what's cool about it is they indicate where maybe 
bridges should have been built, stairs should have been built. Uh, sorry, it's a desire path, of course. Um, but the other cool thing about it is you can make them. Well, some of you may have seen this before because I've used this example in a previous talk. Um, at our head office, uh, they made a new building. And then they made this bizarre thing where there was a road that went around like this. So to get from one building to the next, you had to go up to almost a building and then walk around this enormously long loop. And then eventually, you would get to the entrance, which was directly in front of you. So I'm like, okay, so what if I just walk on the grass like 40 times? So that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took a picture of it because I was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> right? And then one of my colleagues sent a picture from a month later and he's like, what have you done? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, okay, I see what you did. Uh, the designer in me is like, this is actually offset, which is really distressing, but this is called paving a cow path. It has an actual name and this name used in web development. You formalize existing behavior into best practice. And the way you establish the existing behavior is by actually doing it. So that's what I want us to do. WordPress should be all these things out of the box. And every WordPress developer should do all these things by default, but we can't require all WordPress developers to know all these things because it's complicated. Now, there are things I can control and things I cannot. And there are things you can control and things you cannot. You can contribute to WordPress core. Moving WordPress core forward takes a lot of time because it's exceptionally complex because we ship WordPress to millions and millions and millions of sites and it has to be done right. So, although you can contribute to WordPress, the, the pace at which you can change WordPress is slow for a reason. It needs to be secure in all these things. However, as a site owner and as a developer, you have full control over the themes you build and the themes you use. So we can move WordPress forward simply by improving the themes we build. And that's how I came up with this uh, plan of uh, um, building a thing called WP Rig. Um, now, I, I did this in collaboration with LinkedIn Learning. I said, hey, I've been making a bunch of courses. Can I? Can I like take six months off basically and build a free WordPress resource and then build a free course to go around it and then get all the international teams to also make free courses around it and then just release all of it for free? And my boss was like, yes! And her boss was like, what? <laughs> and then I said, trust me, this is a good idea because we need to contribute back to WordPress in a real way. And I want this to be a thing that lives on its own, not tied to us as a company because it's important that WordPress owns this content. This came about because I've been working with underscores for many, many years. And underscores, in my opinion, is the most influential tool for web, uh, no, for theme development. However, underscores is um, a slow moving target because it cares about things like the company it's made by, Automatic, and their needs, because there are a lot of developers involved, and it's because it's trying to set the minimum viable standard for how WordPress themes should be built. What I wanted to do was create an alternative to underscores that kind of throws all that out and says, we want to introduce modern build process. And we want to introduce the most progressive way of building WordPress themes to give people an idea of what the web could look like. And we also want to address this minor issue, which is, when you start looking at what the modern build process is, you very quickly realize it's extraordinarily complex. And not only that, but the people who work with these technologies often are the best communicators at how it works. Um, <laughs> and uh, spend a lot of time writing easily understandable documentation. Um, and it's very clear how to link the pieces together. Um, so I was sitting around, I'm like, is there any way I can put together something where people can just install it and it works and I don't have to, they don't have to care about it. So I built this robot that does almost what I wanted to do, not quite, um, but it's getting there. It's two things. It's a build process, a modern build process, 
and it's a modern starter theme. And they're specifically separated, even though they're shipping as one package, because I wanted the build process to work with your current theme. So if you're a theme developer and you don't want to rebuild your theme from scratch, you can just dump your current theme into the build process and it'll automatically make it better. Um, so the build process that ships inside WP Rig comprises of modern JavaScript, modern CSS, WordPress coding standards, code linting for PHP, JavaScript, and CSS, automatic internationalization, code and asset optimization, and a ton of other features, none of which you need to understand to make it work. These things just happen automatically out of the box. It also has a starter theme that sets accessibility as requirement number one. That ships a fully accessible menu out of the box that you can install in any way you want and it remains keyboard accessible, voice accessible, and everything else. It is styled out of the box with the absolute minimalist requirement. So you can start with something that does not look terrible and then switch out the fonts and switch the layout in any way you want. And it has the minimum required files, meaning it only in the root has index.php, header, footer, sidebar, functions, and a couple other things like screenshot. But there's only one template file, but it has an entire folder of additional template uh, hierarchy files that you can drag and drop in that automatically take effect without you needing to know how the template hierarchy works. Um, it gives you progressive features, including progressive loading of JavaScript, progressive loading of modular CSS, Progressive, lo progressive loading of fonts. Um, it's AMP ready, so if someone uses your theme and installs the AMP plugin, you as a developer can control exactly what happens when they install and activate the AMP plugin. And it has full Gutenberg support, of course, which just means it has a bunch of styling features and some settings, and it's constantly being updated because Gutenberg is not finished. So I sit there literally on a weekly basis and update everything to make it work. Um, WP Rig was launched at uh, WordCamp EU, Europe, WordCamp Europe, this summer. No one knew I was working on it, except for the team I was collaborating with, XWP, and some people at Google. And Google donated space inside their booth to promote this. Now, Google has zero stake in this project. I talked to them, and they're like, yeah, we'll like take away one of our features and put you there. So I stood inside the Google booth, and everyone was like, wait, has LinkedIn Learning been bought by Google? And I'm like, no, this is, this is probably not supposed to happen, but it is because this thing is that important. And since then, um, we've also built a website called wprig.io, which has all the courses for how this works for free. You don't need an account. You can just go watch them in four languages if you want to. You can download it. You can contribute to it and ask all the information about it. It sits on GitHub, where all modern code sits. It can be downloaded into your project and used immediately. And it has a growing list of contributors. So this is some guy um, and Rachel Cherry. We're uh, the uh, core committers to the project. So we sit there and oversee all the code. Um, there is Andrew Taylor, who's currently rewriting the entire Gulp process and doing magic with code that is astonishing to look at. I was looking at it yesterday and was like, how is this happening? This is amazing. Uh, Felix Arndt, um, who is uh, controlling PHP. Tanya Mork, who is also looking at PHP. And um, Weston Reuter, who is working on AMP integration and everything else. And there are more people coming in. And you can also be part of this team, because this is a true open source project where everyone matters. The WP Rig philosophy is simple. WP Rig does all the heavy lifting so you can focus on what you do best, which is build modern themes using PHP, CSS, and JavaScript. You should not need to care about the other stuff because it's complicated and it shouldn't be something you need to be an expert on. Um, I was telling something yesterday, someone yesterday that I spent six months learning how to refactor CSS to modern best practices. Not because I'm a slow learner, but because it's super complicated. And that's just CSS. Then there's JavaScript, then there's HTML, then there's accessibility and all these other things. And technically, if we're gonna build the best web possible, we need to know all those things, which means we all need to set aside the next five years to just learn it, and then hope nothing changes in the next five years while we're learning it, which is not realistic. So the tool should do all this stuff for us. Now here's how you use it, because that's what you all want to know, right? This sounds awesome, I don't believe you, but sure, I'll try. So here's how you use WP Ring. First, you set up your own personal web development environment. Whatever you prefer, WAMP, MAMP, Docker, I don't know, some custom thing, local, uh, fish, 
I don't know, something, the thing you use to boot up WordPress on your computer. It can be anything. Then you clone or copy WP Rig from GitHub into your themes folder, just like any other theme. You end up with a folder that's called WP Rig, and that's the theme you'll be working on. Then you set up a single file inside called themeconfig.json. Um, this file contains the theme settings, like where your local URL is, uh, what the theme is called, and some other cool features. Then you run npm install so that you can install all the dependencies for the project. This installs both the npm dependencies and the composer dependencies, so you don't need to run two processes. Then you run npm run build, and out comes a fully built theme, and you can start developing. Now there's a small problem. <laughs> uh, this requires npm and composer. Now, if you're on a Mac, npm is probably working. Not necessarily, but should be. It's relatively easy to install. If you're on Windows, it's very easy to install. Not a problem, you just install Node. It's super standard. Composer is, uh, needs better documentation. <laughs> Composer isn't hard to install. Reading the installation instructions on Composer is very hard, which is why we made a course that actually explains how to do it so that it's easy. But you need these two things for this to work, otherwise you'll just get a bunch of error messages. But once you have them installed, you don't need to configure anything, you don't need to deal with it, it just sits there, it does its job. Um, when you run npm install, both those things are activated, all the stuff happens inside WP Rig to install all the things you need, and it's installed locally for that project, meaning you can have like 18 different folders with 18 different versions of WP Rig, and they'll all be self-contained with their own settings. Um, this file, the theme config file, is kind of the core of the whole project. So here, you define your theme name and slug, and the author name that's for the translation purposes, which means you can work on the project and change it to any name you want and any slug you want at any time during your project. So if you decide to rename the theme halfway through, you don't need to do any search and replace, you just change it there, and everything automatically changes. Um, you, can, you set up uh, browser sync so that it automatically boots up your browser and syncs your browser to your development environment. So as you make changes in your code, the changes take place in your browser immediately, so you don't have to do the stupid reload thing all the time and wear out your R key on your computer like I do. Um, it has browser list definitions, so you can say how much backwards compatibility you want for JavaScript and CSS. Um, and it has some other features. Um, it also has HTTPS integration. So if you ever wondered how you get HTTPS on your local environment, WP Rig will help you because we have this really cool function called npm run generate cert that generates a certificate for you. And all you have to do is copy and paste the keys and put them into that file and it automatically works. And it's documented. So that incredibly complicated problem has been solved by incredibly smart people that are not me. Because I was like, I don't think we can do this. And then Andrew Taylor was like, yes, of course we can. <laughs> and then he did it somehow. Um, so once you've done that, you say npm run build and you get a burnt warning immediately. <laughs> because there's, I'm pretty sure you've used gulp before at some point. And you've used gulp three. And WP rig uses gulp four, which is much better and does not update automatically. So if you get an error that says something about Gulp not working, which is highly likely, there's a wiki page on the, on the WP rig uh, GitHub repo that explains how to uninstall and reinstall Gulp so that it actually works properly. This is an error in Gulp. Uh, it's a known problem that updating is weirdly hard. It's just because of software. Software is weird sometimes. But once you get onto Gulp 4, all your old stuff will work just fine. You'll just also get all the new cool stuff, which is how WP Rig will work. And then you can run npm run build, browser sync kicks in, and you get an actual working theme. I'll show you, because live demos is very smart to do on stage. Um, so this is VS Code. I just made it white so that it's easier to see on the screen. You're probably used to seeing it as black. This is WP Rig sitting inside a themes folder inside a regular standard theme, and I'm using MAMP to boot it up. So I'll open up my terminal and type in npm run build. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is always the thing. This is the time it will not work, of course. <coughs> so WP rig runs up, runs all its processes. 
some errors come out, and then it boots up the site. Now, of course, this is not WP rig because I didn't activate the theme yet because it wasn't built yet. So this is what it looks like through browser sync. This is the back end of the site. I'm just gonna go in and say appearance and themes. Can you see this? Yes. And WP rig is over here. Activate. And when I go back here and reload it, you get a fully styled theme. Now the cool thing about this is once you've done this, anytime you make a change in any of the files, if I go in here and I say, let's say go to assets and CSS and I don't know, um, let's try global, and then I'll put this on the side here and then make some sort of really atrocious change. So I'll just do that, because that will look nice. Uh, where did my thing go? And then look at the build process here. So I will save this file. The build process goes, oh, you made a change to styles. OK, sure, I'll do that. And then possibly, it's possible that I've overridden my own colors to the point where I can't do it. But yeah, that was a very bad demo, sorry. We'll get to a better demo in a second. But what happens in the process is anytime you make a change, it detects it, runs the immediate update, and then updates, um, uh, updates the browser. Now, what does it actually do? Well, for PHP, it watches all PHP files, and then it checks PHP against WordPress coding standards. And if you integrate it with your code editor, it will also tells you, tell you in the code editor when something is wrong um, and tell you how to fix it. It alerts for any error during the build, and it creates translation files when you export it to production. So you don't need to do like po edit or anything else. It just makes your translation files, ships it out, and everything is there. Um, when you work with CSS, it watches all CSS and SCSS files. So if you want to use SAS, you can. You don't need to set it up. It just works. Um, it compiles SCSS files to CSS files if you use SCSS. It uh, processes CSS through post CSS to give you auto prefixer and a post CSS preset env, which gives you the ability to write modern CSS that is not supported in browsers yet today, and then it'll be back converted. Um, it lints CSS to WordPress coding standards using CSS lint. So just like PHP, it'll tell you, eh, you need an extra line break here, this stuff isn't indented properly, and so on. And it can integrate with the code editor using uh, style lint. So the code editor can flag that as you're working on it, so you don't need to wait for the process to tell you something's wrong and it minifies CSS in production. So you get the most optimized CSS you can. What does it do for JavaScript? Well, it watches JavaScript files. You see there's a pattern here. Um, it lints JavaScript to WordPress coding standards using ESLint because this is modern ES 2015, which means you can write the most recent, most advanced JavaScript you want. Um, it can integrate with the editor to alert you when something is wrong out of the box before you write the code. It processes ES 2015 through Babel and uglifies JavaScript on production. So that means you get optimized CSS and optimized JavaScript out of the box without ever having to touch it. Everything is linted to WordPress coding standards, so you'll always write the best possible code, and it just works. Now, the interesting thing here is you don't need to care about any of that. The whole point of this project was to make the entire build process irrelevant to you. You just run the process, it runs. No need to worry about it. What you need to care about is the starter theme. And this is where the truly revolutionary stuff comes in. So I had some crazy ideas about how WordPress themes should work, and then I got, gave it over to a bunch of other people who had even crazier ideas, and we put that together, validated it with a bunch of actual experts who know what they're talking about, and the end result is a modern WordPress theme that looks and works quite differently from what you're used to, but produces far more performance sites that use less data for the end user and produce better outcomes for you and is easier to work with. Um, it includes, not limited to, accessible drop-down menu out of the box that you can install in whatever way you want that is fully keyboard accessible and works everywhere. Um, modern CSS layouts using grid and flex. So if you want to change the width of anything, you go in and change the grid is like four lines of code and you completely change the layout. It has modern JavaScript uh, and modern JavaScript loading. So it has async and defer built in. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, uh, 
if you load JavaScript, like the traditional thing you do when you load JavaScript is you put the reference in the very bottom of your body element because you don't want the JavaScript to load until all the other content is loaded because JavaScript is blocking. So anytime the browser reads your content from top to bottom and sees JavaScript, it goes, stop everything. I need to know what this JavaScript does before I can continue, which slows everything down. So to patch that, we've been like, okay, I'm just gonna reference the JavaScript down here. And then you get this weird thing where if JavaScript is on the page and something is happening, you load the page and then some jumping thing happens because the JavaScript kicked in. Async allows you to say, when you see JavaScript, load it in without actually stopping, just load it in on the side. And then when you have it, run it and figure out what it does. And defer says, just defer loading until the end, which means you can reference your JavaScript where it's supposed to be in the header and then tell the browser exactly how to handle it. This is not new technology, but in WordPress context it is because the ticket for getting async defer into WordPress has been sitting dormant for six years because reasons. So what we did was we built async defer into WP rig exactly the same way it will eventually be in WordPress. And we made it conditional on WordPress not having the feature. So that means you can use the function today to async and defer your JavaScript. And then when WordPress eventually gets around to baking this in, WP rig just steps aside and everything works fine. So you don't need to update, nothing breaks, everything just works. So that gives you the ability to do what modern JavaScript is supposed to be doing. We also have optimized Google fonts loading based on best practices from Google. They've been in the code and fixed it for us to make it better, which makes it super easy for you to add any Google font. You just type in the name and the weights and then it automatically queues itself up and everything. WP rig lazy loads all images out of the box, so you don't need a lazy loading plugin to do it. But if you have a lazy loading plugin, WP rig steps away and lets the plugin take over. And it's AMP ready, like I mentioned. So if someone installs AMP, the AMP plugin, it automatically says, okay, I'm not gonna destroy everything just because you installed this plugin, and you can control exactly what happens. More features, it has modular in-body CSS. I'm gonna explain what that means because it's very confusing. Uh, it also has plug and play template hierarchy files. So you just say, I want an archive template. Boop, and then you have an archive template and you can mess around with it. I want a custom page type. Boop, now that is there. I want a custom post template. Not a regular template, but a custom post template that's separate from the single.php file. It sits there ready to use. Um, it has object-oriented theme functions, which means the functions.php file is very small. And then all the actual functions sit in dedicated files. You can easily see what's going on. It has CSS next, meaning you can use CSS custom properties or variables right now. And it works globally across the site. You can use all modern CSS features and everything gets backported to current standards and it has modern JavaScript. So what does that actually look like? Well, if we take a look at some of these features, you might see that this behaves a little bit differently than what you're used to. So um, for example, we're not shipping style.css as the only style sheet. In fact, if you go and look at style.css, you'll see the file contains that. That's because WordPress requires this file to be able to recognize the theme. But this doesn't have to be the style sheet. In fact, this never gets loaded on the front end because it does nothing. It's just a comment. The actual styles sit in a bunch of different files under the assets folder. So here we have global.css, which shows all the standard styling that goes on every single view. We have frontpage.css for just front page. We have content.css for just the content, so just the content loop. Comments.css for just the comments, and so on and so on. And when you load any view inside WP Rig, like a single post, WP Rig will figure out which one of these style sheets is relevant for the current view and only load those and nothing else. So you never load up a ton of CSS into the browser. You only load what you need. That means the browser caches all these files individually, and it means when you work on a site that has like 10,000 visitors a day or an hour, you don't have to update the entire style sheet if you make a change. You only update the, the small file that contains that change, and that gets updated on the user end, and you don't get a massive hit on your browser. And you just save a bunch of data for your end user, which is always a good thing. But the question, of course, is how on earth does that work? Because that's not how WordPress does things, right? The answer, uh, <coughs> sorry, I'm quite sick, uh, so I will be coughing a lot in this microphone. Um, the answer sits in um, all of these uh, template files. So let's see, if we go to, uh, what is a good example? Content.php, no, uh, sidebar is a better example. There we go. 
So, oh no, wait, that's not a good example. <laughs> uh, comments is a good example. So, um, so, the reason why I'm confused here is because we're currently working on it and there are people that are com committing content as I'm working on it. So, I just need to find the piece that does the thing that I'm looking for right now. Uh, maybe it's an index? This is version 2.0 of the process, which is slightly different from, there we go. So if you go and download WP Rig 1 right now, you get WP Rig version 1. It's very easy and well documented. This is version 2, which is currently in process, which is a little bit confusing to me, but the documentation is being built, that's why. So here, in index.php, there's a function that says WP print styles. And it sits inside the for loop. So it says, if I have content, then I want you to go and find a file called WP rig content and print it here. And what that does is it goes into a function that sits inside uh, the functions file that looks at the CSS folder. So here, under assets, there's a CSS folder and it says, all of these files here, commons, content, front page, global, sidebar widgets, get automatically registered as style sheets, but not on queue. And then this function, WP print styles, takes whatever current file is being referenced and prints it, prints the link element inside the body element inside your browser. So that means as you're reading the HTML, you'll see the head has a style sheet, that's the global style sheet. And then way down in the content, there's another link element that points at a new CSS file. And you immediately go, that's just wrong. That's not how you do it. You put all your link elements in the head. And then I say, actually, no, that is not how you do it. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to modularly load your CSS with components. This has been the standard since 2016. It's just no one does it, so therefore no browser support it. But since WP Rig is doing it, Chrome now does it. And that style sheet does not render until you scroll down to that element. So that means if you have a footer style sheet and some crazy stuff going on in the footer, and the browser never, gets rent, never scrolls down to it, style sheet doesn't get loaded. You just save the user a bunch of time and money. It gives you complete control, and it makes it much easier for you to develop custom features. If you have a custom, um, a custom template, you then attach your style sheet to that custom template, so it only gets loaded if the custom template loads. You don't have to write any kind of common, uh, complicated if and statement to figure out what page you're on. The actual template file loads the CSS for you. Um, other pieces that are relevant that I've talked about is in header.php, you'll see this function here, WP rig is amp here. This function simply tests for the AMP plugin's activation. So if the AMP plugin is activated, it says, I can test now conditionally what I want to do. Because the AMP plugin does a bunch of weird stuff. For instance, it says, you can't sideload JavaScript anymore. So all your JavaScript is out. We're gonna inline all your JavaScript and you have to do it in the AMP way. And you as a developer can say, that's terrible, I don't like AMP, but that's not your decision to make. You ship your theme, other people use it. They can install the AMP plugin. You as a developer need control over what happens when that happens. So this simple function gives you a conditional statement to say, if the AMP plugin is installed, I want to do this. If the AMP plugin is not installed, I want to do this instead. It's just a Boolean statement. Um, and you'll see as you go through the theme that there's a bunch of places it pops up and you get all this AMP code. This was written by the AMP team to ensure WordPress works with the AMP plugin and ensure you as a developer have control so that you can decide exactly what happens which is extremely important as the AMP plugin rolls out because a ton of people are gonna use it. And if your theme's not ready for it, weird things are going to happen. In fact, regardless of whether you use WP Rig, you need to test your themes for the AMP plugin because it will do strange things to your theme unless you're ready. This is just the reality that is coming on us no matter what you think about it. Um, one last thing I wanna show you is how the CSS variables work. Because I have like two minutes left and I want to save people time. So currently, I don't know if, uh, are you familiar with CSS variables? Who does not know what I'm talking about? There is no embarrassment here. This is very, very, very new. 
So CSS variables is basically what um, SAS has been doing for a long time, which says you can define a variable just like you do in JavaScript or PHP and say, uh, give it a name and then put some value in it. A font type, a font family, a color, uh, anything. And then in your CSS, instead of writing out the name, no, writing out the value, you just refer to that variable, which is great. Like if you have one color, you're gonna repeat 2,000 times in your theme, instead of writing the color 2,000 times, and then going, oh no, I wanna change it, and then you have to go change 2,000 entries, you make the variable, set the color in the variable, use the variable in your CSS, and then as you update, you just update the variable, all the values update themselves. Now that's just like level one. One CSS variables ship in browsers it opens up a whole new world of possibilities because it can nest and it can have, uh, have dependencies on other variables and all sorts of really cool stuff. But the browsers don't support this, so you can't use it, which means once the browser supports it, you have to rewrite everything, unless you use WP Rig. So what we've done is we've created this file that's called CSSVariables.json that captures the variables on top there and the media queries down below because these are two different new features that are not yet available but will be available soon. And here you define any name you want and any value you want. So for instance, we have global font color is gray, blackish, global font families, crimson text, and so on. And then inside your CSS files, like global CSS, instead of defining the colors or the fonts or whatever, uh, you would do something like this. So you say var global font color. Now this is the way it's supposed to be done. So the JSON file is something weird that we came up with, but this is actually how CSS will work a year from now. And I want you to be able to use it today so that you don't have to update all your styles later. And if you think about it, like really think, what is the thing that every theme developer wants to do in the theme that's like a total royal pain? Color swatches, right? You're like, I wanna have two different color themes. And the way that you do that in WordPress is you inject the CSS for the new color in the head and you have to write it verbatim inside a CSS file and it becomes this massive inline CSS pile that you put at the top of the file. With CSS variables, once this ships in browsers, you'll be able to change the variable name, the variable value, and put that in line, one line of code, and then the same thing happens. So this is like, you need to understand this now because it becomes something you can use very effectively in the future. WP Rig right now will take all of these variables, combine them with what's in CSS variables, and just swap out the values. And when 2.0 comes out, there will be a setting in theme settings that says um, to not do that, so when variables get supported in browsers, you just go into your original theme, turn that feature off, it'll ship with the actual variables, and it'll work across the entire theme, and you don't have to redevelop anything. And this is the philosophy of the entire starter theme. All the stuff that's done here is done for the future with backwards compatibility to current, so that you can work with modern JavaScript, modern CSS, modern PHP, modern HTML, and it still works today, but it'll definitely work in the future and allow you to develop code for tomorrow today. And this is just the beginning. Because once we have this shipped out, we're gonna push this further. The whole point here is for you to use modern technologies to build themes. The whole point here is to use the best tools available. WP Rig integrates perfectly with all these tools, like um, like uh, VS Code and whatever code editor you use to highlight everything you're doing. Um, the code integration includes WPCS, which lints your PHP, IntelliSense, Editor, Config, ESLint, StyleLint, and so on. Out of the box, you just install them and they work. Um, and this allows us to build that path into a future where themes are built for the modern web today. And you can do that. WP Rig helps you build modern themes and modern themes move the web forward. That's the entire point. I said that the web is for everyone. Well, WP Rig is also for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I was very tired yesterday. Um, so, <laughs> um, 
The, <laughs> if you want more information about how this works, you go to wprig.io. It has all the videos for training and all the documentation and the story behind this project and a bunch of other stuff. If you want WPRig itself and you want to contribute to it, you go to wprig slash wprig on uh, GitHub. Uh, you'll see there's a ton of stuff going on and we are actively looking for contributors with specialized skills. And we are actively looking for examples of how people are using this so we can build it to fit with your development environment and your requirements. And you can test drive WPRig 2.0 today. It is under development and it's a rethink of the revolutionary rethink that makes everything even better. Now, I covered some of the features. There are a ton of more features. And the way that it's built is so that you don't need me to stand here and tell you how it works. If you just read the code and read the comments, you'll actually see how everything works. And trust me when I say this, and I'm not saying this because I built this thing, I'm saying this because I've had people tell me, building themes with this tool is easier than building themes with any other tool before. I'm like, it sounds like I'm blowing air, but I'm not. Okay, so we have 30 seconds for questions. Yes? What would the update process look like if WP Rig gets updated? Mm -hmm. Okay, the question is the standard question for any starter theme. If you start building a theme, the theme gets updated, no, the WP Rig gets updated, do you then update your theme to match WP Rig? The answer is no. The second you pull it down into your development environment, it becomes your thing. It becomes your thing. This is exactly like underscores because WP Rig will rapidly move forward. So every time you download it, it'll be slightly different from before because it'll always promote the latest standards. But once you use it for your project, that becomes your project and it's self-contained so that it's just for you to play around with. It also shapes with things like a Travis setup. So if you upload it to GitHub, it'll automatically tell you if something's wrong and do unit testing for you, which I didn't mention. So there's a bunch of little smart little things. Yes, uh, you had a question. I'm just curious if you're using uh, SAS versus CSS, which kind of variable themes we're talking about, because if you have trends like that, is it CSS variables? Right, so if you're using SAS, you can use those variables, like you can use custom properties, CSS properties in SAS, and they will translate properly out. Because that will become the best practice once the CSS variables get shipped, because then SAS variables become meaningless since CSS variables do the same thing at core, right? But you will have the option of turning that feature on and off at any time. But right now, it'll compile your SAS out to CSS and carry over whatever variables you use, and then recompile it. But if you use SAS variables, the SAS variables will compile out like regular SAS variables into regular CSS. So it does not touch the SAS process. It just compiles SAS normally. But if you want to use CSS custom properties, they translate through the SAS process without being touched. This is a feature of SAS. It's actually smart of the SAS developers. Questions in the back? Yeah, time for one more. One more. Over there. <laughs> Yeah, of course. <laughs> it has a full set of styles for Gutenberg. It has full integration with custom colors and all this other stuff. It actually extends the basic features to show you how to do it. And we're constantly updating it to match the current best practices for Gutenberg. It doesn't build any custom blocks or anything like that, but it does all the things you can currently do in a theme with Gutenberg. So if you boot it up, you'll see you have widths and everything. If you look at this front page here, you'll see as I scroll down, here we have the custom widths built in, right? So, and these are all the custom blocks that are styled. So everything is working the way it's supposed to. That's the gallery block. Everything carries over the way it's supposed to in Gutenberg and gives you full control over each element. It also has like a huge commented out style sheet so you can mess around with it yourself. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.